Hello and welcome to the Cocktail Collective podcast. My name's Evan Mallet and I'll be your host for the foreseeable future until obviously Disney buys us out like everything else. Um, anyway, this is going to be a podcast basically on film and only on film. Um, so if you don't like film, I'm afraid this isn't the podcast for you. But thank you for listening anyway. Um, this is going to be hopefully a weekly podcast, maybe maybe more frequent than that. Um, but I'm in my first year at uni, so um, I'm just using the time really to try and improve my skills. And this this podcast is this this podcast is on a budget, so I'm currently recording via my phone. This isn't going to be edited, so there's probably going to be a lot of mistakes in here. But stick with me, and um, hopefully you enjoy it. The title of the first episode, as you may hopefully would have already seen, is why the horror genre is in its golden age. Um, now, the golden age of horror was, you know, originally seen to be yeah, prior to like the the seventies, I say. Um, maybe, maybe, yeah. Well, prior to the prior to the two uh, thousands, definitely. Um, you went through a period of silent horror films, um, obviously in black and white, and then you had Nightmare on Elm Street and many other films that really, really caught the eye of many film goers in that period and since then it hasn't really really um how do I say it um really excited movie goers as much up until recently. Um I'd say in the past past five years I'd say the, the horror genre has slowly gained more recognition. Obviously in the Oscars generally it gets looked upon looked over. Um however with new films coming out that I'm about to discuss, I feel like the the horror genre definitely, while not rival the the um, something like the MCU, it definitely has its own fan base and it's growing. It's definitely growing, as you'll see as I'm about to talk about certain films like it, which yeah, it broke box office records for a horror film. So that's that's incredible, really. Um, the first factor I wanted to talk about was Jordan Peele. Um, now I hope you know who he is. He's he's only made two films as of yet. He used to be in comedy, and um, with recent success, especially 2017's Get Out and this year's Us, really have cemented his place in the horror genre. He's he's basically the catalyst for everything good that's coming out of the horror genre right now. Um, Get Out. Um, I hope you've seen. Um, it ranked first on Rotten Tomatoes on its top 100 films of 2017. Daniel Kaluuya's Oscar nomination, also a massive factor in why, you know, the Oscars always, always never look at the, the performance because it's horror films have got the reputation of being fairly low budget, fairly fairly weird and wacky with no real, um, no real direction and a lack of, kind of quality I'd say and they 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 usually try and distance themselves from it um but Jordan Peele has proven that horror films can and often well can run up what am I trying to say here sorry um can affect the um the Oscars and kind of disrupt uh the norm really um and we saw that with us this year um, I loved that film. Lupita Nyong'o had an amazing performance. I wouldn't be surprised, similar to her, her, um, similar to Daniel Kaluuya, if she gets a Oscar nomination. But what really was kind of a, a coming in of coming of age for that um, for that kind of film in the genre was that they used humor to a great kind of effect. So similar to the MCU, um, the the MCU uses humour to give relief in in fairly serious moments and when the audience needs kind of like to uh, like a breather really. Um, and in Us, uh, Winston Duke, who also is in the MCU, funny enough, provided that he was able to give a, a really good performance as well, similar to Nyong'o's. But for instance, I, I won't try and spoil too much, but us is basically a, a home invasion film, and when they're home, I say with a um, well, the whole of their home. Um, 
when when it does get invaded by um, doppelgangers, the uh, Mr. Duke does provide a great relief, um, a great sense of humour, and while that's that's partially down to Peel, that's also partially down to the actor. His deliverance of the lines, his his aura, it was it was really good, really really believable as well. To be fair, and us has the potential if you've seen it to start off its own cinematic universe which is pretty crazy um considering that you know everyone was kind of downplaying the horror genre before but now it really has the potential the fan base to push on and with jordan peele at the helm hopefully he stays in genre in the genre for many years to come um he could really really you know do something similar to kevin feige what he's done with marvel so um i hope i hope that is the case um and yeah let's move on to the next point similar to jordan peele the horror does have its um horror has its own cinematic universe already um however it's not as as widely renowned as the mcu it's the the conjuring universe which is largely overseen by james wan who funny enough also has links to another universe the dc universe he directed aquaman uh, which came out last year. I loved it. Um, and I think James Wan's a really good director. Um, while the, the there's there's some films in the Conjuring universe which aren't the best, e.g. the first Annabelle, and, you know, the, the Con- Conjuring 2 is, I don't know, it's I, I wasn't the biggest fan. Um, but there are many more films coming out in the genre, which shows that there's a fan base shows that there's there's demand for the for the films and that the cinematic universe has a decent enough box office to continue um the, the nun came out last year which is a spin-off of it within within the universe um that was that was pretty awful i have to say but um there's also films coming up like the conjuring 3 in 2020 and the crooked man which is a spin-off from the conjuring 2 and the universe, while it's not as high quality as something as like Jordan Peele's films or something like A24 or uh, maybe, I don't know, it's probably on the same level as Blumhouse, but um, it's still, it's carving out its own kind of niche and its own fan base. And it definitely helps the horror genre. It can, helps the um, the frequent releases of horror films because... As you'll see this year, there's many more horror films coming out. Um, the Curse of La Lorona came out uh, just a month ago, I think. And Mars coming out this week. And Brightburn, while it may not be the scariest film ever, it's um, it's in the horror genre. And that came out this week as well. So it's nice to see that the genre is kind of developing. It's, it's carving out its own its own path in the industry and it's really nice to see um and it's also nice and refreshing to see different ideas come across other than just something like a plain old superhero film that i've kind of got bored of to be fair um also universal studios want a slice of the pie as well um they're creating their own dark universe which um supposedly began with dracula untold in 2014 however that wasn't the biggest hit and then they tried to reboot it with Tom Cruise's The Mummy, uh, which also did fairly poorly. However, they are, they have plans to to continue with it, to push on with it. They're trying to do things based on, e.g., Dracula, e.g., The Mummy, e.g., Frankenstein, all that kind of um, old, the old myths and legends, you know. Um, um, and yeah, so I think it could, it could, while it's not typical horror and it's not the scariest kind of stuff they may do that in the future i don't know um but obviously the, the mummy and dracula and so didn't have our ratings so who knows but yeah it's it's definitely um an interesting dynamic also happening in the, the genre right now um on top of that blumhouse and a24 other studios that are doing really really well generally they they work on lower budgets which is great because they often succeed in doubling or tripling what they what they usually spend on a film 
um, and you saw that with Happy Death Day and Happy Death Day to You by Blumhouse and the Purge films have many sequels um, and then in terms of A24 at the minute I love what they're doing Hereditary um, Tony Collette had a stand up performance last year it was a shame that she didn't get an Oscar nomination um, but the film was eerily creepy um, I should have written a review to be fair on it it was, it was good um, some parts I was a bit like don't know what the hell is going on. It's very creepy. But um, it's it was a great film, great watch. And that's why I go to see horror films. I go to see horror films to see something different, something original. And also to come out of the cinema thinking like, oh, what was that about? And why did he do that? Or what was that? And um, that's what Hereditary made me do. It made me think when I came out of the film. I stood outside with my friend um, I, I, for a good hour just talking about the film and you don't you don't often do that with a superhero film so that's why I feel like the horror genre has a deserving place in today's society um, and then f following on from uh, Hereditary A24 has well is about to release Midsommar which is Midsommar but in a kind of a, a Nordic kind of tone so it's Midsommar and it's starring Will Porter and um, oh, I can't I can't think of a name, sorry. <laughs> but that's coming out this summer, um, and that looks just as it looks along the same tone as Hereditary, to be fair. However, it's it's you can watch the trailer on YouTube and it's it looks similar to the um the cult kind of nature of Hereditary. Um lots of weird stuff's obviously gonna happen. But it's interesting to see how they use a bright kind of whereas Hereditary was mainly in a dark kind of very eerie location most of the weird stuff happened at night midsummer it looks like it, most of the the horror will be happening in the daylight in in the heat of the summer and that's what i'm really interested to see how scary will it be i'm sure it, i'm sure it will be um but that's what i'm most intrigued about and i think that's one of my my most anticipated films of the summer um moving on well if we go back in time to 2017, that's kind of when I started really paying attention to the, the genre a lot more. It was the biggest horror movie in in box office history. It made $700 million worldwide from a $35 million budget. Um, and domestically in the US, it even beat Four Ragnarok, which is pretty crazy. And it beat the Justice League and Transformers The Last Night, which I haven't seen, but... Transformers often make over a billion dollars and the fact that it beat one of both of those films as well worldwide is pretty insane. Um, they often say that Stranger Things is was kind of based off the feeling of, of Stephen King's kind of novels um, and it definitely encapsulated the uh, the Stranger, Thing, Stranger Things vibe. Um, there's definitely a, a market for nostalgia and we're seeing that with um, while it's not as nostalgic now, um, like Pet Cemetery, another Stephen King property just came out, and it did reasonably well. Um, I'm still yet to see it, but it's it it's it's supposed to be better than the original, so that's a good thing at least. Um, and then obviously you've got It Chapter Two coming out this year. The trailer looks amazing, um, and yeah, I, I while I, while I'm I'll be quite quite sad to see the uh, the It It chapters kind of come to an end. Um, as long as it chapter two is amazing, which I I hope it will be. Um, it's it shows what how what and how popular horror films can be, and um, yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to that. And then also, um, we've got I wanted to put a little point about like ingenious ideas that horror films are doing right now. So as I as I alluded to earlier, Brightburn's currently out right now. And once again, a low budget, and but the reviews are great. You know, it's a. It looks. I want to see it. I haven't seen it yet. It's, it looks like it to be a mix of Chronicle and it's. It goes off the vibe of like a deranged Superman kind of thing like that. And it's. It doesn't look necessarily like the scariest film ever, but that's not what you should always go to a horror film to see. Horror films can be more than just jump scares. I feel. 
and um, that's what looks like with Brightburn. Oh, sorry, Brightburn's out in America right now. It's not in the UK. Coming out in the UK, I think next month. Um, and also, while I, it's not necessarily on my radar, but another kind of ingenious um, idea that I saw the other day was I was scrolling through Twitter, and the the Chucky franchise. They're coming out with a new film, Child's Play, this year, I believe. Um, funny enough, voiced by Mark Hamill. And it's it's really, really clever how they're doing their promotion. They're using the Toy Story 4 posters. You can you go on their, their social media accounts and they are they are using posters from Toy Story 4 but putting a Chucky Child's Play twist on them. And it's really, really quite creepy but really, really clever um, how they're kind of promoting the film. And it's getting a bigger audience than they ever probably would have got before. So I'm really looking forward to that. <coughs> And just to end on a side note, um, Midsommar and Hit Chapter 2. two, The two probably most hyped films I am for this year. I think they're going to be amazing. I think Midsommar's kind of gone under the radar a little bit, so I really hope you, you check out the trailer for that. And it obviously Hit Chapter 2, you probably already have. So um, they're two massive films I'm looking forward to. It's, it, it's, it's kind of crazy as well, because a couple of years ago, before... E.g. before it came out, I probably would have been a lot more um, invested in the new Spider-Man film that's coming out this year. But while I did see Endgame, um, there were a few, there are a few flaws in it. It was a great film nonetheless, but eventually you do suffer from burnout from those films. And stuff like Midsommar and while it it chapter two isn't as original, but um, it's it does you know provide something different in this saturated superhero kind of modern age that we're living in right now um so yeah please go and check out the the midsummer trailer and hopefully you go and see it when it comes out in cinemas anyway um that's going to be the ep- end of episode one thank you guys for listening and i hope you tune in for episode two thank you very much Bye bye